Open it up already. It's heavy. Annie drops the garbage bag with a thud at the entrance, crouching to catch her breath. If it's that hard, you didn't have to bring it here, I say, and Annie glares at me. Throwing out garbage costs money. If I can dispose of it at my mother-in-law's Cindy, it saves money. If you want me to take it back, hand it over. Here. She thrusts her hand out and wiggles her fingers. I try desperately to lift the garbage bag, but my weak body makes it difficult. Only a pitiful groan escapes my lips. Annie just stands there, smirking at me. Looks like it's impossible for you, even if you spend all night. Well, I'm leaving. Staying any longer is a waste of time. With that, Annie leaves me behind and walks away. I was at a loss, unable to move the garbage bag from the entrance. If it stays there, it'll block the way and I won't be able to get outside. I desperately tried to move the garbage bag, putting all my strength into my arms. Finally, the bag slid a bit. Seeing a glimmer of hope, I pulled the bag even harder, but it was so heavy that the friction with the floor caused it to tear. In the unexpected turn of events, I hit my arm hard against the shoe cabinet. Ouch! I can't take this anymore. Holding my arm, I looked at the garbage bag and saw its contents scattered across the entrance. I realized that I should have just divided the contents into smaller bags instead of dragging it. As I began to pick up the garbage, I noticed something odd. No way is this. Seeing what was inside the bag, I understood Annie's true intention. Tears began to flow naturally from my eyes. My name is Cindy. Now, I'm sitting at a desk in a dimly lit room, making handmade jewelry. The only sounds in the room are those of the jewelry making and the ticking of the clock. I could faintly hear the happy voices of children playing outside. That's enough for today. Though I was still in the middle of working, my vision was getting blurry, and my fingers were no longer moving as they should. If I pushed myself too hard, I might make a mistake and have to start over again. So, even if I felt I could do a bit more, it was wise to stop. When I put down my tools, I noticed for the first time that the room had gotten dark. Oh, it's already this late. Even as I murmured, there was no family in this house to respond. Feeling a bit lonely, I maneuvered my wheelchair to turn on the light switch. As the room lit up, I saw the pile of black garbage bags in the corner, but I didn't want to look at them. What should I make for dinner today? Quickly tidying up my tools, I went to the kitchen to start preparing dinner. The cheerful voices of children playing outside continued to be heard. As I listened to them, chopping vegetables on the cutting board, tears suddenly fell from my eyes. Why do I have to live such a miserable life? As I thought that, I couldn't stop the tears from flowing, and they dripped onto the cabbage on the cutting board. The reason I'm in this condition is because of a car accident over 20 years ago. Since then, I've been in and out of hospitals and living in a wheelchair. Because of this, I couldn't properly take care of my son, Joe. My husband, although he tried, was busy with work, so he ended up neglecting Joe as well. I still can't forget the sight of young Joe looking lonely in the middle of the dark room when my husband and I came home late at night. I truly feel sorry for Joe. And the emotional scars Joe bore severely disrupted our lives afterward. He ended up becoming a delinquent. He wouldn't listen to either of us 
constantly getting into fights with his classmates and being called to school. Even so, I tried to stay positive, thinking that someday I could reconcile with Joe. So, to supplement my husband's income, I also did side jobs making accessories. However, Joe didn't reform, instead, he demanded money and became violent with me. My husband collapsed, likely due to the stress from work and home life. Worrying about Joe until the end, he passed away. Joe, perhaps feeling some responsibility, got married to a woman named Annie and quickly moved out. I was left with an unnecessarily large house and my jewelry making. I sold my jewelry at flea markets, so I had some interaction with neighbors. Talking with people only happened during those times. As I reminisced and shed tears, the doorbell rang. Someone coming at this hour had to be her. I quickly wiped my tears and hurried to the door as fast as I could. However, the person on the other side of the door couldn't wait and started banging on the door. Just a moment, I'm opening it now. As soon as I unlocked the door, my daughter-in-law Annie burst in with a hostile demeanor. She was wearing a suit, likely coming straight from work, and holding a black garbage bag for some reason. It was tightly packed and firmly tied. Why didn't you open the door sooner? You're really slow. As soon as she entered, Annie, her face red, hurled insults at me. I'm not just sitting around doing nothing, you know. I still have to check on you, so I came. I'm sorry, but it's hard to move quickly in a wheelchair. Stop making excuses. You should get more exercise. Here, take this garbage out. It'll be good exercise for you. With that, she tried to throw the garbage bag into the room. Stop it. It's really hard for me with these legs. If this keeps up, I'll be buried in garbage. I desperately stretched out my hands to stop her from throwing the bag. But my efforts were in vain and the bag slipped from her hands, landing with a thud on the floor. Why does she have to be so cruel? Unbidden tears I thought I had wiped away streamed down again, but I didn't want Annie to see them, so I looked down. Annie crouched and whispered, crying won't get you any help. You're not a child, so get it together. Frustrated, I gritted my teeth. But in my weakened state, I couldn't resist. Annie knew that. She potted my shoulder, smiling mockingly. You're too slow to do any hosting anyway. This is boring, I'm leaving. She opened the door to leave, but suddenly turned back, looking at me seriously. I'll come again. The garbage isn't sorted, so you need to do it. Otherwise, you'll get in trouble. Understand? I was too angry to respond. As soon as the door closed, I hurriedly locked it. Annie has been coming to the house every day since my husband died. It's not out of kindness to check on me. She comes and insults me, and lately she's taken to throwing garbage at me. I didn't know what was inside but it was so heavy that I couldn't muster the energy to take it outside. I picked up the garbage thrown on the floor and piled it in the corner of the room. I felt like I didn't care about anything anymore. If I had to spend my remaining years in loneliness, I might as well let the garbage bury me and leave this world. After I'm gone, the neighbors would be shocked to see this mess. Then, the truth about Annie's actions would come to light. That was my only form of resistance, and in a way, I was looking forward to it. Why did he marry a woman like her? Even so, I couldn't contain my frustration, so I decided to call Joe. I hoped he could warn Annie. Fortunately, 
Joe answered the phone right away. What's up? Are you feeling sick? No, it's not that. Annie has been doing terrible things to me again. I told him everything that had happened so far, but Joe didn't listen to the end. Before I could finish, he interrupted harshly. You're just complaining about Annie, right? You should have said that from the start, instead of rambling on. Why are you saying such awful things? I'm suffering too, you know. Your suffering doesn't matter to me. Annie takes good care of me. You must have done something to upset her. I didn't do anything. Don't make assumptions. I knew I sounded tearful, but I couldn't help it. I had no one else to rely on, and I wanted Joe to be on my side. But because of our past, Joe didn't see me as his mother anymore. He probably thought it was too late for me to come crying to him. Still, it was unfair that he wouldn't listen to me despite the truth of Annie's actions. I'm busy. You must have nothing to do, which is why you're picking on Annie. Before you complain to me, reflect on your behavior. That's terrible. Just terrible. What's so terrible? You never cared about me, so this is what you deserve. Joe laughed loudly, and his laughter pierced my ears like sharp nails. After laughing for a while, he hung up. By then, the room was already enveloped in the darkness of night. I need to turn on the light and make dinner. But Joe's words and Annie's treatment left me feeling so down that I didn't want to do anything. If I had to endure this, it would have been better if I had. Just as I thought that, a sharp pain shot through my chest and my throat felt tight. I need to stop thinking such foolish thoughts. I maneuvered my wheelchair to turn on the light, then plated the cabbage I had chopped earlier and microwaved some frozen fried chicken to place next to it. Even with a disabled body and harsh words thrown at me, I had to live on. A few days passed. As usual, Annie came at her set time, threw insults, and tossed garbage bags into my room. I had been quietly piling the garbage in the corner of the room, but it seemed that the time had come. Some of it had collapsed and was starting to take over the room. I had stubbornly refused to throw out the garbage until now, but now that the room was starting to fill up, disgust won out. Besides, it seemed the neighbors had noticed Annie's behavior. When I was outside, a neighbor approached me and gently potted my back. I know you're always being treated terribly. I didn't want a medal, but if you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. I might take you up on that if something comes up. That brief conversation with the neighbor made me happier than anything else. I had thought I had no one on my side. With a bit of newfound confidence, I decided to tell Annie to take the garbage back. Around 6 p.m., Annie arrived. As usual, she was in a suit, but the garbage bag she carried was larger than usual. She seemed to have had trouble bringing it. Her face was red, and she was breathing heavily. Open up already. It's heavy. Annie dropped the garbage bag with a thud at the entrance, crouching to catch her breath. If it's that hard, you didn't have to bring it here, I said and Annie glared at me. You don't get it. Throwing out garbage costs money. If I can dispose of it at your place, it saves money. My house isn't a dump. Take it back. I tried to lift the garbage bag from the floor, but it was too heavy to move. What's inside? I can't budge it at all. I tried to pull it, but my weak body couldn't manage. If you want me to take it back so badly, give it to me. Here. Annie thrust her hand out and wiggled her fingers. 
I desperately tried to lift the garbage bag, but my weak body couldn't manage. Only a pitiful groan escaped my lips. Annie just stood there, smirking at me. Looks like it's impossible for you, even if you spend all night. Well, I'm leaving. Staying any longer is a waste of time. With that, Annie left me behind and walked away. I was at a loss, unable to move the garbage bag from the entrance. If it stayed there, it would block the way, and I wouldn't be able to get outside. If there was a fire, I wouldn't be able to escape. I desperately tried to move the garbage bag, putting all my strength into my arms. Finally, the bag slid a bit. Seeing a glimmer of hope, I pulled the bag even harder, but it was so heavy that the friction with the floor caused it to tear. In the unexpected turn of events, I hit my arm hard against the shoe cabinet. Ouch! I can't take this anymore. Holding my arm, I looked at the garbage bag and saw its contents scattered across the entrance. So, I should have divided the contents into smaller bags instead of dragging it. As I began to pick up the garbage, I noticed something odd. No way, this. When I picked it up, it was a package of microwavable macaroni and cheese. And it was unopened. What is going on? Could it be that Annie didn't realize and just put it in the garbage bag? I eagerly tore open the garbage bag to check its contents. Inside, there were not only mac and cheese, but also other ready-to-eat meals, all unopened. And it wasn't just ready-to-eat meals, there were also dried pasta, canned fish, and even cash wrapped in plastic bags. Why is all this inside? I left the bag at the entrance and went back into the room, opening each garbage bag piled in the corner. Sure enough, none of them contained actual garbage. They were all filled with ready-to-eat meals, canned goods, non-perishable items, and cash. I was stunned unable to understand what was happening. Since every bag contained these items, it couldn't have been a mistake. But why go through such a roundabout way to deliver these? I had no choice but to ask the person directly. I cleaned up the scattered items at the entrance and waited for the next day. The next day, Annie arrived at the same time. I beckoned her into the room without saying anything. Annie hesitated for a moment, looking down, but then followed me into the room. She looked around at the piled up garbage bags with a blank expression. I've never checked the contents before, thinking it was garbage. I'm sorry I didn't realize you were trying to help me. Annie said nothing, just looked down at me. But suddenly her face twisted, and she covered it with both hands, bursting into tears. I'm sorry for saying such terrible things to you. It's okay, but there must be a reason. Tell me everything. Through her tears, Annie explained the situation. It's Joe's fault. Everything that's happened has been on his orders. Why would Joe do such a thing? Though Joe resented me. I never thought he'd go this far. Joe is in financial trouble. In financial trouble? That can't be true. I found it hard to believe that Joe was struggling with money. When my husband passed away, Joe received a substantial inheritance. He took most of it. It's true that I also have physical limitations, so ideally, I wanted to rely on the inheritance. Even though I needed the inheritance, I felt guilty for making Joe feel lonely. So I didn't complain when he took it. So it made no sense that he was short on money now. When I pointed this out to Annie, she hung her head in shame. It's his business. 
Joe started a cafe to help revitalize the town. I had no idea, but apparently, Joe had started this business a few years ago. Since he had a good public image, he managed to get the necessary permissions from the city and the bank to open the store. But things didn't go as planned, and the business failed. Burdened with debt, Joe set his sights on my inheritance. At first, I refused. I knew from Joe about your situation and understood why he hated you, but I couldn't bring myself to mistreat someone with a disability. Annie sat on the floor, hugging herself. So, you had no choice but to do it, I said. Annie nodded and lifted her shirt, showing me her bare back. I gasped at the sight of the painful bruises. He's not normal. He acts like a gentleman in public, but he's cruel to me. Annie put her shirt back down. He didn't trust me either. He ordered me to document everything I did to you. But you mixed in the ready-to-eat meals instead of garbage as a form of resistance. Annie shook her head sadly. Partly, but also because Joe was using me to torment you. If anything went wrong, I'd be the one blamed since he didn't do anything directly. Annie continued, scratching her head in frustration. So it was insurance. I thought if I insisted it was food, not garbage, my punishment would be lighter. I didn't mind if you actually threw it away. But why are you being honest now? A neighbor almost called the police. I realized it was pointless to continue, but I'm still scared of Joe and don't know what to do. Annie didn't seem to be lying. She looked genuinely distressed, roughly tugging at her hair. Seeing this, a wave of intense anger surged within me. I didn't mind if Joe hated me or if I lost my life. He could use my inheritance to pay off his debts or invest in his business as he pleased. If that satisfies him, then I can say I fulfilled my duty as a parent. That was all I could do for my son. But involving Annie and subjecting her to violence was unforgivable. I took Annie's hand. Thank you for telling me. Let's stop Joe together. But how? What should we do? Don't worry. I have a plan. With that, I began preparing to help Annie. First, I explained the situation to the neighbors and told them we would be staging a scene so they wouldn't be alarmed by any loud noises. Next, Annie and I planned and recorded her verbally abusing me with her throwing garbage bags at me. Okay, I'm ready, Annie said at her cue. She threw a garbage bag at me. Take this. No, stop it. We filmed several variations, changing clothes to ensure Joe wouldn't recognize us. As we continued, it started to become fun, and we ended up with a more realistic video than I had anticipated. That should do it, Annie. If possible, I'd like you to record Joe harassing you as well. Annie, clearly enjoying herself, smiled broadly. Secret recording, right? Leave it to me. I'll do it well. Annie returned to Joe for the time being. Next, I decided to stage a call with Joe. I would call him, sounding as mentally strained and close to the edge as possible. Joe. I can't take it anymore. Help me. Of course, Joe wouldn't genuinely worry. Every time he heard my suffering voice, he'd laugh, thinking, suffer all you want. After making a few fake calls, I went for the final act. Joe, I don't want to live anymore. This will be my last call. I'm sorry for everything. Even I thought my performance was convincing. It seemed Joe was completely fooled by my act. He even told Annie, that old woman will kick the bucket soon. Finally, I'll get my inheritance, 
with satisfaction. Naturally, Annie recorded all of this. We also successfully filmed him harassing her, securing all the evidence we needed. With that evidence and minimal belongings, Annie fled to my house. She had already explained the situation to her workplace, so Joe visiting her there would be pointless. From my house, Annie contacted a lawyer to expose all of Joe's wrongdoings. A few days after suing Joe, I received a call from him. As soon as I answered, he rapidly asked, Hey, do you know where Annie went? Oh, Joe, I don't want to live anymore. Shut up. I don't care about you. Where's Annie? I don't know. I haven't seen her. I could tell Joe was panicking, even over the phone. Don't play dumb. That woman pulled a stunt. The only place she'd go is to you. I'm coming over. About an hour later, Joe really showed up. Through the intercom, his tone completely changed to a gentle one. Mom, long time no see. Let me in. I brought some sweets. Let's eat together. He showed a bag of sweets to the monitor. A while ago, I might have believed him, but knowing everything from Annie, I could see through his act. Annie's not here. I'm sorry, but please leave. She's not? Then why won't you open the door? If she's not there, it's fine, right? Joe maintained his gentlemanly tone. I see, indeed, he seems pleasant on the surface. No, the room is messy so I can't open it. Then I'll clean it up. So, let me in. No, I'm not opening the door. Go away. Hey, old woman, cut it out. When I firmly refused, Joe showed his true colors. You bastard. You have some nerve defying me in that condition. Get ready. Losing his cool, Joe started kicking the door violently. The sound echoed through the room. Open up. Open this door, damn you. The door was sturdy metal, so I didn't think it would break, but Joe's crazed intensity scared me. I'm scared. What if he breaks the door? Annie, who had her hand on my shoulder, was trembling slightly. Annie, call the police. Got it. While Annie called the police, I tried talking to Joe. Joe, stop this. It's pointless. But my words didn't reach him anymore. After a while, I heard muffled shouting outside, and the kicking stopped. Looking through the monitor, I saw the neighbors had restrained a Joe. Held by the men, Joe couldn't resist. Let go. Let me go. But the police soon arrived and arrested Joe. After confirming this, Annie and I went outside to face Joe. Hey mom, tell them to let me go. Sorry, but everyone knows your true nature now. Give it up. Don't be ridiculous. It's your fault. You ruined my life. Joe was taken away without apologizing to Annie. The neighbors also offered me words of comfort. Thank you, Cindy. Annie gently held my hand as she said this. Joe faced the consequences of his actions. Someone had filmed the incident and posted it online. The footage of Joe kicking the door and shouting obscenities quickly spread on social media, revealing his true nature. His past wrongdoings, hidden threats, and fraudulent activities were all exposed. He lost all community trust, his business collapsed, and he had to pay huge compensation and repay his debts. On top of that, Annie filed for divorce. Armed with the evidence she had collected, and Joe had to pay a large settlement. Joe, who lost everything, contacted me three days ago, saying he wanted to come to my house. 
In the meantime, I devised a plan to help Joe turn his life around. Please, Mom, help me. Joe, who came to my house, repeatedly apologized in front of me while rubbing his forehead on the floor. I'm truly sorry. You're the only one I can rely on. Please do something. I'm sorry, Joe. As a mother, I want to help you, but I'm in this condition and don't have enough savings. So, I talked to your uncle. With that, I called out to Joe's uncle, who was waiting in the next room. The door burst open, and a tough-looking man with a shaved head and sunglasses stepped out. This is a construction worker. When I told him about you, Joe, he said he'd be happy to hire you. They're short-staffed right now. I had arranged for him to come, not only for the job opportunity, but also as a bodyguard in case things went south. Joe, clearly displeased, took a step back. But the man quickly approached and grabbed Joe by the collar. Come on, let's go. Don't worry. You'll be living in a dorm in the mountains with nothing else around. You'll pay off your debts in no time. Now get up. No, I don't want to, Mom. Joe reached out to me, but he couldn't get away. He was dragged away by the man. After watching this, Annie emerged from the room. It's unfortunate, but it can't be helped. Yes, but Joe will manage somehow. Annie, who had divorced Joe, had no family and was all alone. I suggested that she live with me, and she gladly accepted. Oh, it's already this late. You have a class to teach, right? I'll take you since I'm going out to job hunt. Since that incident, I had more opportunities to talk with my neighbors. During one of these interactions, they suggested I start teaching a handmade crafts class. Initially, I was confused, but I had become quite skilled over the years. Now, I teach many students and earn more than I did with my freelance work. Yes, please. Let's go. Annie pushed my wheelchair as we left the house. We walked and chatted happily under the warm early summer sunlight. There was a time when I couldn't see a future, but now I'm enjoying bright and happy days.